After the fantastic Impossible Creatures game from all the way back in 2003, no one has ever attempted a proper full RTS featuring solely animals in combat. That is, until the developers of Empires of the Undergrowth took this daunting task upon themselves and focused on insects, specifically ants. Here you have several species of them to choose from, but your colony will have to fight against everything from frogs to beetles, mantis creatures, spiders and even carnivorous plants. Yes, you manage a full-on colony in this game. Starting with the queen and scouts, you create workers and warriors from food-hungry Lara. You might be a bit surprised by the real-time strategy tag and might have expected a management simulation out of this game. But no, my comparison to Impossible Creatures was made specifically because this game really is an animal RTS. You have an HQ, this being your Ant Queen, which produces larva, out of which you gain new units, these being the mentioned workers and warriors. They collect resources from the environment, these being other animal larva, dead adults and many other forms of food like seeds, nectar and fungus. They bring back and stockpile resources which then you use to build more spots for larva, these acting as both your population cap extenders and production buildings for units. So there is base building, you take up space in your base with food stockpile buildings, larvae hatching buildings and even speed boosting paths of sorts. These paths help your colony workforce and protectors travel faster to the furthest reaches of your insect realm. When you need more space to grow the colony, you order workers to dig tunnels or rooms in the hexagonal landscape. There is even tech research and upgrading of units, well, in this game it's more like biotech and speedy evolution as you can spend special kind of resources on adaptations and additional capabilities of your workers, warriors and queens. Now the one element that isn't exactly RTS-like is the way you order your units groups of ants, because in Empires of the Undergrowth you cannot select units and give them direct move and attack orders but your queen can place pheromone markers which are different for each unit group. Once the marker is placed, the ants, which correspond to that particular pheromone marker, will rush to the spot where it has been placed and do what they do best, fight and collect food. You can customize these groups of ants somewhat, with different orders chosen for the group, like exclusive food gathering or just to fight at that location. So this gives you more nuanced control over what they will do once they get to the designated marker. When one ant dies, he is replaced back in the larva hexagonal nest from which he was born with another just like him. If of course you have the food for it. This is where the difficulty comes in. Attack an especially vicious enemy nest, lose your warriors and if you do not have food stockpiled for new warriors to hatch, your queen remains undefended and once it is killed you lose the game. There are certain upgrades which give you a kind of second chance by spawning defenders, but it takes some playing to unlock these. You can upgrade your nests for a hefty sum of resources as well, saving up on space but still boosting your insect units. But from my own hard earned experience, when it comes to ant warriors, quantity is more important over quality. One feature which is truly rare in RTS games is combat and expansion on multiple maps at the same time. Since your ant colony is underground, the only way to go is up, so eventually your soldiers and workers get to the surface and now you have two battlefields to watch. And there can be even more than two depending on the scenario at play. When it comes to playable modes, Empires of Undergrowth does not disappoint. You have the narrative driven campaign mode with a very interesting twist on a lab experiment in progress, before which I would recommend playing the excellent tutorial. Then there is the classic RTS skirmish mode with maps and AI enemies to choose from which also introduces a free play mode. Here you can customize a game match down to every single detail this game has to offer, be it map type environmental factors, special creatures, victory conditions and dozens of other settings. Lastly, there is the arcade section with three additional game modes. 
First is the Battle Arena, which lets you choose any creature you want and pit them against each other. No limits on anything, letting you learn just how strong each creature is and what are its default capabilities. Next are Extra Levels, basically unique scenarios which place you in difficult position from the very start and you have to use everything you have learned of the gameplay so far for your colony to live. Last mode consists of scenarios you could have tried in the game's demo version. Despite not having any competition, this title has had a rough 6 years in early access, due mostly because of the small size of the developer Slug Disco, who had the privilege to be picked up by the best publisher a struggling strategy game developer could have, Hooded Horse. And regardless of the long development period, the Empires of the Undergrowth has thousands of stellar reviews on Steam. After playing it for a while in the various game modes, I do agree with those reviews and see a bright future for this title as long as developers keep adding features and content, refining the gameplay and balancing the myriad insects and other creatures. I do hope you will give it a go and even if you don't like insects or have a phobia or something, this might be good exposure therapy for you, because it definitely was for me. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!